Shalom, Israel. Yahbashim Yahushat. Barakatum to all the brothers. Yahushim Maratum Bashim Yahushat. To all the sisters. I'm Officer 500 Adiyah. Joining with me is the troopers, Trooper Darash uh, in, in Toronto. And um, young man Nathan. Who's there? Brother Elish is there? They're, uh, they're on their way. They should be here shortly. Come, come. That's that. We said we are the ISPK started at 1 West 125th Street, all in New York, on the commanding general Yana. And like I always do, ISPK, we are we are a school. We are, we are not a, a religion. We are not like what you see in the church. We are the school of the Israelite, where black, black, Hispanics, and Native Indians could learn their identity, could learn where we from, where they're from, could learn their culture, their heritage, you understand their way of life. Now, what we see all throughout the, the world, we see protests, right? Everybody protesting for George Floyd. Everybody protesting and everything. You understand? What has a protest ever changed? You understand? Did it protest? Protesting is not gonna set us free. Protested, protesting, rioting is not gonna set us free. It's not gonna change a damn thing in our community. It's not gonna make black people love black people. It's not gonna make Native Indian love black people. Native Indian love themselves. You understand? It's not gonna stop the drug epidemic in our community. It's not gonna stop a damn thing in our community. It's only gonna make make it worse because they're rioting, they're, they're breaking things, and after that, the police is gonna come and you understand? They're gonna be more in our neighborhood, you understand? With new equipment. I don't know. I don't know if you are, if if the same in Toronto, but I just received the news. I was watching the news today. I just look at the news and they said you 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 see that they've been like a, a lot of firearms, right? Come, come. Well, in the news, say the police now is gonna have new firearms, man. <laughs> new yeah. automatic weapons, man. You understand? Now the police is about, is about to have the guns that they don't want people to have, so they're pre preparing for some. You understand? So protesting is not gonna do a damn thing for our community, man. Separation is gonna do do change our life. Separating for, from this white from this white man. Separating for the oppression oppression that we're living under. You understand? That one. What I mean by that is separation from Christmas, you understand? Halloween, all these wicked holidays, you understand? We need to separate from that. And that's how we hurt the white man. That's how we hurt this empire, you understand? Because supporting their, their way of life is only gonna make them rich. And we could protest all day long, you understand? We could protest all day long. It's not gonna change a damn thing, man, you understand? To bring the Russia. Uh, to Le Leviticus chapter 20 verse 20, 26 we're going to see what the Bible say about uh, separation you understand the, you go in the church the pastor says what it's not about race everybody should be together you understand brother Nathan where was that the, the first place where everybody was together where everybody was together not... yeah in the Bible there's a oh in uh, the Tower of Babel Exactly, you understand? Exactly. Everybody was together with it. You understand? Everybody was in one language and everything. But the preachers tell us, you understand? We should be all one. We are all one. We should all be together. Just like Nimrod, you understand? The, the, you see that the preachers not following God. They're following this empire, which is based off Babylon, Egypt, and so on. You understand? Go ahead, Triple the Rush. Holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you, wow. people, that you should be mine. Hold on, hold on a second, my true Be what? Be holy, right? God. What does the word holy mean? Like, as when be separate. But the preacher, but the preacher is telling us we are all the same. We should not separate between black and white. We all should come together, though. You understand? Uh, this is what the uh, preachers say. You understand? We should not be together. We should be separate because we are holy by, by se our separation. The Christian church is not holy, man. You understand? The Christian church don't have a damn thing about holiness. You understand? About separation. The Christian church is about, about the same thing in the Tower of Babel, Brother Nathan. You understand? God said what? Be separate. Be holy. Because I am holy. Go ahead. Khan, and uh, for I, the Lord, am holy. 
Uh, uh, the, what the, what did the uh, the Mosai do? I have severed you from other people. <laughs> Separated them, right? Come on. But the preacher tells us, understand, it's not about race. You understand? Everybody should be together. Everybody should drink together. You understand? While the Bible says to be separate. You understand? All right, I'm gonna pass the class to Officer Abun. Y'all about show me your shabbat sir. Y'all about show me your shabbat Y'all about show me clap it up. The water priest officer, uh, 500 IDR. All right. Um, uh, questions. Um, I have a, a question, sir. Right. Uh, Slaki, um, until um, when we last talked about my uh, last question, um, uh, you didn't get back to me. Uh, I'm still a little bit confused about the about the creation of man. All right, what about it? So, like, so I remember you saying like how because I because we understand the true breakdown of the you know we make, we came from dust we know what that means. But, you know, when I was a Christian, I always thought that, you know, God, like the way he made us was a certain way. But now I realize that that's not what the scripture means. I want to I was just curious, like, does the Bible teach how exactly like the process that he made man or does it or does it not touch on that? Um, how did it, again, how, how did the most high put plans together? Uh, through the elements of the earth. Right. right. Well, how are they? How are they formed? Well, like, like, walk me through. Walk me through the creation of plants, for example. Con, I'm, not, I'm not sure, sir. All right, let's get the scripture. Go to um, Genesis chapter one. Okay. Uh, verse twenty. Con. Um, this is the book of Genesis, chapter one, and verse twenty. Uh, As a matter of fact, uh, verse twelve. Okay, con. Go to verse 11. I'm sorry. Verse 11. Con, Con, Con. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself and after his kind, and God saw it was good. Hold on one second. There's a precept where it said he let it, there was a dew that came up that let them let the plant plants um uh sprout. Uh, the dew I thought it was is it yeah. in this chapter? Is it in two? La uh, sir. Uh uh Salakia, sir. It might be Genesis 27, 28. Read it which is Genesis 27, 28. Uh, Therefore God gave, give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. And no. no. So that's, that's not it. Hold on one second. Maybe we can find that preset. Let me know. Go ahead. So, okay, so is it about when the, the mist of the ground was watering the, the earth? Yeah, that's the preset. Yeah, that's, um, that's Genesis. Two. Oh, that's two and six, sir. So like, yeah. Two and six. All right. Um, bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. Yeah. Uh, Genesis two, six. Boom, yeah. yeah, read that. Right. This is Genesis two and six. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Read verse uh, 5. Verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Okay, now we now know today that there is a natural cycle of water. Everyone's familiar with the water cycle, correct? Water... Uh, um, uh, it's in the ocean. It gets um, absorbed into the clouds via evaporation, mixed with condensation, right. nuclei in the clouds. It forms clouds. Clouds get heavy enough. Rain falls through what is called precipitation. You know of it as rain. The precipitation seeps through the soil. It gets into what's called groundwater, which Canadians, we have a lot, of, a ton of, not you, but Canada has a lot of groundwater as well as a lot of fresh water. 
The fresh water runs off into the oceans, the process repeats itself over and over again. That process of the water cycle was not yet established. The Lord during this time, during Genesis, the first chapter, the world is in its in a chaotic state. The world was what was the world without form and void. It was without form. It didn't have a shape to it, let alone natural processes. You have natural cycles of wind, right? You have the westerly wind. You have the um, you have something called phenomenon called nor'easters. You have wind patterns. Wind follows patterns just like the water follows patterns. The pattern of rain. There's uh, magma underneath the earth, hot rocks underneath the earth that move. There are tectonic plates. There are seasons. That was not established at this time. The earth was not operating in its natural state. Everyone understand? So when it says he made herb or, or, or uh -huh. seed to sprout out of the ground at that time, what he literally did was he caused the dew to come up from the earth. So there was water already in the earth, and he caused it like a dew to come up and cause the plants to sprout. Why do I bring that up? I bring that up to say that it wasn't, creation wasn't, didn't start the way, uh, the way science teaches it. Science teaches that we came out of the ground as a half whale, half fish, morphed into a monkey. And then that monkey uh, uh, decided it wanted to shave its hair. That monkey got some Gillette, shaved his hair and presented himself for a job interview. And then that monkey, over thousands of years, became a man. Okay, that's a damn lie. Charles, Charles Darwin is a maniac. Okay, the first man and woman that were created were just man and woman. You get my point? It was just people that he put forth and produced on the earth, same way, in a similar way that he produced herbs, etc. People were just brought here. He, he formed them out of the elements. And he gave them, you know, understanding. All right, gave them a mind higher than animals, higher than than uh, normal creation. Let me show you that as well. I'll go into it. Uh, hold on one second. Um. One second. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Um, boom. No. Can't find the damn scripture. Oh, also, Adiar, try and find the scripture where the Lord said in the Apocrypha that he gave us, um, he gave man understanding. In the Apocrypha, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find it. All right. Uh, I'm going to find that precept. But in any event, I'll start here. I'll try and find it. Um, Canada, I posted the sign in link. I should be Canada. All right, I posted the sign in link. Okay. Um, so, so, like a, sir. So, so, like a, sir. Uh, can I get a breakdown for Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, sir? Yeah, bear with me one second. I'm finishing up this brother's question real quick. Um, so, the Trooper Darash's question, right? Man was just produced on the earth. All right. It wasn't man wasn't produced in his um, normal cycle, meaning a baby didn't just pop up on the earth and then grow up somehow produce other babies. You get my point. Man was brought on the earth and the Lord gave man the ability to reproduce. He said it where uh, be fruitful and multiply. OK, and then what they did is they started being fruitful, and multiplying. They were able to reproduce sexually. Right. Or undergo sexual reproduction. OK. And then through sexual reproduction, babies were produced. Those children grew up to be adults. And then the process started. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? The process at first with anything in creation was not, you know, it's it's um, in its normal order. The world wasn't in its normal order. The Lord set up the world in its normal order. And he established it by his commands, the tides, 
uh, moon phases, the sun and, and Earth's, you know, direction and position relative to each other. Those were all established by the Most High during creation. People were established and then given the ability to reproduce. They started reproducing and that's how it went down. All right. So like you Sorry, said, sir. Go ahead. Um, is the verse you're looking for in Ecclesiastica 17 Come and, on. and sick? Let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, counsel and tongue and, uh, and eyes, ears and a heart gave he them to understand. With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. All right. Give him a hand. I, I'm not sure. I think that's it, though. Give him a hand. All right. Young man, uh, Nathan, he found the scripture. All right, so he gave man different faculties, eyes. I believe you said, um, re was read it again, if I'm uh, not misquoting it. Counsel and, and a tongue and eyes, ears, and a heart. Right, now all mammals have tongues. What does that tongue mean? The word tongue is often it's, it's synonymous with language, all right? Lengua is um, language in Spanish. It also means tongue. Lingua, language in Portuguese, also means tongue. I'm sure the, the word for language in French is similar. All right. Uh, tongues are synonymous with language. The Lord gave us the ability to speak to each other. Other animals, they communicate, but not with their, not with tongues, not with languages. Okay. The way, the way people do. Okay. Now, can you, can you train a parrot to talk? Can you train a, you know, a monkey or animal to say a few words? You can, but man has speech, a tongue. You get my point? Man has languages. English, French, Portuguese, and the 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 the, the uh, only language that will be in the earth after World War III, which is the Lashuan Kodash, the ancient Hebrew, oh. biblical Hebrew. All right. So uh, that's another precept of the Lord. The Most High gave us the ability to understand. Um, well, I'm just, I'm just sharing that as a precept for how man was developed. Go ahead. I I have it here. Second Ezra sixteen and sixty one. Go ahead. It says. He made man and put his heart in the midst of his body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. Yeah, that, that's another precept as well. So you can take those two. That's, how, that's what the Lord did. The Lord gave him breath, uh, um, literally put breath in the man. But uh, with Adam, all right, what you're reading about with Adam is the spiritual breath. All right, because right. the Lord finished his work after the sixth day. He made plants before that in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the second chapter is going into exactly how those plants sprouted forth. On, All right. So I hope that helped. Does that answer your question? Con, uh, it helps. Yes, sir. All right, Con. Okay. So, um, uh, Officer Ayar, go ahead. <laughs> Officer Adi, are your question? Connor Duan Khan, Salaka, sir. Ibrahim. Yeah, go ahead. Baba Kwasha, sir. Connor Duan Khan, Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and I remained there with the king of Persia. All right, what's your question? What's your question? Uh, so like, so I just wanted to have a breakdown of, of what's, what was going on, the UPK breakdown of it. So. Okay. Uh, what do you think it's saying? I'll just ask you first. Uh, well, it's, it was it was talking about like uh, the king of Persia withstood an angel, sir. The king, are you saying the king of Persia withstood an angel? Go on, sir. Okay, anybody else? Daniel 10 and which verse? Salakia? Daniel 10 and 13. Uh, Salakia, sir. Uh, it, 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 it was to Daniel. Then after that, the kid, the Michael came in here. So like it, sir. Okay. All right. So someone want to give this, give it a shot. Um, if I may, sir, I believe what it's saying is, but the prince of the kingdom 
of Persia withstood me. So, so, like, so uh, what the scripture is dealing with is like uh, principalities and governments and rulerships and like how, you know, we have uh, the angels fighting for our nation and um, the other, like basically there's other powers that fight for the other nation. All right. All right, so what is, what is this saying about the angels in relation to the nations? This is an angel. Michael, or Mayaka Allah, is the chief angel of the protective army, the, the protective host of the Most High. All right? What is this saying about the relation with the angels and countries on earth? That, that they are over... They're over principalities and like they're over countries on the earth. Yeah, they dominate them. They run them. And the, the angels go out in the midst of war. Okay. The, um, uh, Germany lost World War II because the Lord was not with Germany. Everyone get my point? We say that all the time in the ISU. We got slaughtered, right, by the Calvary. The Native American Indians got slaughtered by the Calvary. Why? Because the angels, the Lord was with the Calvary. That's the only reason why we were slaughtered, man. The First Nations are, are some of the most athletic brothers and sisters on the planet Earth. You mean to tell me in the age where you got a, a musket that's not about as accurate as, as a paper airplane, you getting, we're getting slaughtered by the millions, the tens of millions, and we lose Canada? That's supernatural. It's supernatural that Haitians, okay, had to fight some five-foot devil Named uh, uh, Napoleon, but that was even a fight. That is supernatural. Okay, when, what should have happened is they would have came in their little boats and they would have got the baguettes knocked out of their stomach. Okay, that's what that's what should have happened. Okay, because the Lord's not with us, we had to fight them, constantly fight them, and never really get free from them. Never really get free from the French. All right. Well, this, but this scripture is showing you that the angels go out to war. When it says he withstood the king of Persia, he's not literally fighting them. He is with the army that's fighting against the king of Persia. And Michael coming, Michael is coming because Michael is fighting with the winner. You get my point? Like Michael, the angels take orders from the most high and they allow to win who they allow to win. Get me the, get me the precepts on it. Get me um, where it says uh, prices over all uh, principalities and all that uh, in Colossians, the first chapter. All right. So which angels is talking to Daniel? This is the same angel that gave uh, Mary the vision as well as Joseph. The angel's name is Gabriel or Gabariah Allah. All right. There are four archangels. Gabriel, who is who is over the, the army that gives out messages. All right. Visions and things like that. He spoke to Daniel, spoke to uh, uh, Mary, spoke to Joseph. All right. You have Michael, Mayaka Allah. Mayaka Allah, he is like the supreme commander of the protective army, all right? The 200 million million, the 200 million angels that are coming are going to be under the authority of Michael. When it says Michael is returning or uh, Daniel 12, where it says Michael will stand, that's not, that has nothing to do with Yahweh Shai. They teach in the Christian church that uh, uh, in Daniel 12, where it says Michael, that's talking about Christ Yahweh Shai. That's not what it's talking about. Michael is the supreme commander of the army Christ is the commander in chief. You get my point? Christ is returning, but he's bringing his, he's bringing his supreme commander as well. Just like if, if Donald Trump had the balls to go to war, which he doesn't. Okay, he escaped the war. Uh, uh, he was drafted into the Vietnam War, but he he um, didn't have to go because of his because his foot hurt. You can go look that up. Your great American president Donald Trump evaded war because of bone spurs. For his foot hurt. Okay, but a president, uh, a ruler that does have the balls to go out and fight with his army, his name is Yao Hawashad, world calls him Christ. Okay, he's returning. Michael is going to be over the army. He's going to answer to Yao Hawashad. All right. Rapaya Allah or Raphael is over the healing. Okay, a man or woman gets healed. That order, com or that command came from an angel. It's Rapaya Allah that's doing the healing. Raphael. You read about him in the book of Tobit. All right. He disguised himself as a brother. Okay, to walk with uh, Tobit, who's from the tribe of Naphtali. Tobit would be today the so-called Mapuche Indians of Chile, uh, the Mapuche Indians of uh, Argentina, or what's left of the natives of Argentina. Okay, that's who Tobit and Tobias were. Okay, so called uh, Chilean Indians, and the angel disguised himself. Okay, 
so that he would look just like a brother from Naftali. All right. The angels look like blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians it's like the Israelites. Uh, in any event, um, the angels, the most high is with the winner. Deuteronomy 28th chapter says what? If we don't do what he says, what's going to happen? We're going to be destroyed. We're going to come in one way. We're going to flee seven ways. Right. How are we going to flee seven ways? Because we're going to get right. we're going to be getting slaughtered. How are we going to be getting slaughtered? Because the Lord is not going to be with us. Michael is going to be with the U.S. government. Michael is with John Cabot. You get my point? Michael was with Napoleon. All right. So that's what the scripture is showing. Give me my precepts. Uh, Colossians, where it talks about Christ being over principalities. Are all going to rock on. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All mm -hmm. things were created by him and for him. Principalities and powers are all created by him and they're, and they're created for him. For him. He said in the scriptures that he didn't come to do away with the prophecies. Okay, the scriptures say that Jerusalem shall be what? Trodden underfoot of the Gentiles. Forty and two months. P idiots ask you, why would God... Again, if you're saying that God is... is is uh goes out with armies why would he be against us why would he allow the central americans to get slaughtered by the united states government why would he allow his people in, in guatemala guatemala honduras el salvador be, to be slaughtered because of prophecy prophesy the gentiles would have jerusalem 40 in two months a small period of time all right how would that happen because of this scripture a thought officer idea it's a better view all right because the scriptures like this show you that shows you that um uh, the angels are over um, authorities, kingdoms, etc. Christ, Yahweh Shai, is over all of them. All of them are going to be put under his boot. Does that make sense? Still out here, sir. Go ahead. I had also a precept too. Go ahead. Uh, it's Ephesians uh, 1 and 20 and 21. It says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Yeah, Yahweh is over them, all right? And, and how is he going to take them? Because the angels are going to come and remove America from power, all right? The angels fight in every battle, and the angels are with the winner, okay? Come on, come on. Concert. The most high was with the so-called white man, was with the slave master. Why? Because of what we did. And the protesters, that's something that the protesters should understand. All right. I'm not sure if you brothers went out to pass out the flyers today or not. But those protesters, they need to understand that marching and begging them for equality is not going to do anything. Because the most high put it in their power to rule. All right. At the hand of, you know, the angels. It's supernatural. His ability to reign and to rule is was given from on high. It's supernatural. And when we understand that, we now have a leg up on them. They don't un they don't realize it, but we do. And we realize that we would know that it's not marching. It's not throwing bricks. You get my point? It's not, you know, please, please be a nicer master. Master, please give me uh, $15 Canadian. That's all I want. I want $15 an hour Canadian. I want $25 an hour Canadian minimum wage. Please, master. That's not going to get us out of this captivity. You understand? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but spiritual. That's how we're going to win. Okay? We're going to win in spirit, meaning what? By our behavior, by things that you can't see, that, you, that are not tangible. Okay? You can't grab onto, that you can't break with a, a, a damn brick. If you can't, no justice, no peace with. Okay? Why? Because power is given from a, a, a power that is spiritual. A man that is spiritual, that's not flesh. Everyone understand? Time. And he took it from us. Okay, so that's the, you know, you know the full breakdown on it. Um, Gabriel speaking, and he's talking about how Michael, he and Michael went and uh, were on the side of the, of the, you know, different sides of the battle. The, the angels, okay, go with the winner. Okay, are on the side of the winner. 
I can go to all the precepts where the Lord said he would smite us. The Lord said he would destroy us. The Lord said he would send armies against us. He doesn't get off his throne. So how does he send armies, Officer Adiar? How does he make sure we're bull for? The angels go and exact his orders, execute his orders. They're with the winner. All right. Any, Anabar, any other questions? Salakia, sir, can I get a, a breakdown? You've broken this down for me before, but it was a very long time ago. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is Exodus uh, 16 and 23. It's, it pertains to the Sabbath day. It's the okay. last part of the verse. Bake that which ye will bake today. Yeah. And seize that which ye will see, and mm -hmm. that remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning uh so the question is like um when it's telling you to bake that which you will bake today what is that uh saying okay like the brother that was lighting the fire baking is not turning on a maytag baking is not pressing a but was not pressing a button on a microwave baking and seething seething was not you know uh uh just Turning a spigot on and getting some water. You get my point? The amount of work it took to boil was tremendous. It was a job. So the point of this scripture, like all scriptures with the Sabbath, was to make sure that no servile work was done. That's the, the spirit of the law. The letter says, bake and see that which you'll see. That's the letter. The spirit of the law, the point of it is so that no one will be tempted to work. No one will be tempted to work anyone, rather. Okay? The same reason why there's a preparation day in the New Testament. A lot of people get tripped up about the preparation day. There is no law saying uh, on this day, the day before the Sabbath, you shall prepare. All right? So why did they have a preparation day in the New Testament? They had a preparation day so that the servants, the people that were setting things up for them, who were their servants, who were their workers, their employees, would have everything set up the day before the Sabbath. All right? Again, everything has to go back to the law. It has to be a precept. The precept is no servile work shall be done. A work that you do for a service. Okay, some people cook for a living. They do that today in Toronto. All right, they do that today in, in um, I heard those bagels in Montreal were real famous. You never took me, but it's all right. I heard they got a nice bagel. They boiled <laughs> I heard they boiled, I heard they boiled the bagel with honey in it. Nobody ever took me. Nobody ever grabbed me a bagel with no sweat. All right. But um, I heard about it. I had to find out about it on my own. All right. But they got some mean bagels up there. That's work. All right. The point of that scripture was so that no one could do work um, on the Sabbath day. So everything would be baked and made. All right. Again, that's not, you know, you cooking food for yourself. That's not what that's talking about. All right. Con out of one con, sir. Any other questions? Con, sir, uh, can I get a breakdown of, uh, if, if I may, of uh, Micah chapter 4, verse 5? All right, let me get with you real quick. Uh, you want me to read it for you, sir? Yes, please. All right, so this is Micah chapter 4 and verse 5. For all people will walk, everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Read verse 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and not shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. Okay, go ahead. Five. For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Okay, what, what, is, what is your question? Um, what does it mean for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of of the Lord our God. Like, what does that part mean? Okay, well, uh, what is the God in this context? Um, uh, when it says for all people uh, what, I, what I think it's saying is that the God that the people will walk in, what I look at it as like um I just took it for what it said, like God. I thought it meant like their own gods or something. No. Um, generally, when it's a lowercase g in God, it's talking about authorities in the sense of earthly authorities. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6 says this, that ye are gods. Go check the uh, um, punctuation on that gods in Psalm 82 and 6. It'll be lowercase. 
to signify a uh, ruler, authority, or judge. Why do I say judge? Because another scripture that many brothers get tripped up on in thinking that Ruth is a Moabite, they'll go and read, uh, I think it's Ruth, the first chapter where Ruth said, we'll go and serve, we'll go and, um, we'll go and be with our gods or something like that. And they take that to me, you know, she was a Chinese woman, you know, coming and um, coming to worship the most high. It's not what that's talking about. That lowercase j God, the lowercase G signifies judge or judges. Why do I say that? Because Ruth is around the time of judges. Okay. That's why it's in that order of that book. It's in around the time of judges. There was no king. David, David was what? Three or four generations after that, after Boaz. Okay. I think it was Boaz, Obed, Jesse, then David. He's about three or four generations after Boaz. Oh, she was talking about gods because uh, uh, to signify judges, meaning this. She wasn't going to be amongst the Moabites anymore. She was going to go back with Naomi and be under the, the rulers, the Israelite rulers in Judah. All right. Because she was a Judite living in Moab. All right. So context is, is I mean, it's, you know. Context is everything in the Bible. Without context, you'll become Catholic. You'll make a religion. All right. And so right. the context of the scripture is authorities. All right. Now, with that understanding, I want you to, to try and try and break it down. So when it says, but they shall excuse me, for all people will walk in their God, their authority. What do what do people what do people have confidence in? What do people move by? What do, what do the Christian what do people move by? At what order did the Christian church close? Is it at the order of God or is it the order of God? <laughs> you get my point? God. Uh, Go ahead, or whoever asked the question. So, uh, Rocky, so um, does, that sounds like um, basically the people, their God to them is like their government, like who they vote for. Who yeah. like they elect and chose choose to be king over them? Right. Well, that is a uh, God is um, an authority. <laughs> All right. The scriptures also say in Exodus, "Thou shalt not revile the gods." You've heard of that scripture? <laughs> right. The, the, that, yeah, that's that's talking about that. What that means is you can't hate your rulers, your leaders. Brothers and sisters in Toronto who should not be, you know, saying that you all drink blood and making all kinds of other BS nonsense. Because you are the gods in Toronto. You're the rulers in Toronto. Okay? And people are Israelites, so-called West Indians and Latinos, are not supposed to revile you, hate you. Not so, people are not so, It's a sin to say hateful things about the rulers in Israel. All mm -hmm. right? Everyone can understand it when it's about, you know, Jesus or Yahweh Shai. Of course, I would never say anything about him. But commanding General, General Yohanna is this and that. That's a sin. All right? Because we have established ourselves as, as leaders of the nation of Israel because of our works. All right, because we do what it says, what is written in the scriptures. All right, so everyone trusts or walks in their own ruler. The Christian church, their God is Donald Trump. Why? Because Donald Trump and uh, what was that cat's name? Dr. Fauci said that it's unwise to have large public gatherings and they recommended Christian churches to close. And now your pastor is on a live stream. We go onto that live stream, Officer IDR, and we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it got so bad in one line. I'm making comments. They blocked my comments. And then at the end of the stream, they were like, Yeah, so there's some very mean people in here. They have they 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 look black. They're actually they're Caucasian. There are white people that are that have black people and they're saying mean and hateful things. I'm trying to type. I'm in the back trying to type. I'm not Caucasian. Show me one scripture where it says to vote. I, that's all I said. I said Show me one scripture where it says to vote for your oppressor. That was it for me. They blocked the hell out of me. Their God is who they vote for. Donald uh, Trump, Al Sharpton, uh, Jesse, 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 Jesse Jackson, Justin Trudeau, Maxine Bernier. Uh, um, who's the uh, Ford, right? That's the MP, right? Or that's the that's the MP. All right, Ford. Uh, Mayor Tory. That's the God of the West Indians. That's the God of the Torontonians, the people in Toronto. That's who they walk in. We're going to walk in the Most High, Yahweh. That's who we'll walk in. Okay? Why? Because your God, Trudeau, tells you that homosexuality is an alternative lifestyle. Your God says that it is legal. Our God says that a man that puts smoke in between his lips 
is an ungodly man. Our man, our God says that a man that lies with man as he lies with a woman is disgusting. Something disgusting under the earth, man. Okay. So that's the breakdown on that. Anything else? Lock you, sir. I got a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, I can't. I'm trying to find it. I know it's in Second Ezra, but the okay. verse talks about. Um, it talks about how it's a narrow path to make it in the kingdom, and right. it's like it's like walking through a water or something, and there's fire on both sides. Um, but the to the point of my question, it says um, there's a verse that says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because they looked in the city and they couldn't get in. Um, so, so my question is just: I don't, I don't understand the breakdown of uh, the lake of fire. Like, are there Israelites who are going, like, like going to be destroyed? Um, because, like, are, are they going to be destroyed in fire and, and not make it in the kingdom? Or does that does that contradict the verse of? I know it doesn't contradict. I, I just don't understand. Um, okay, what um, what chapter and verse? You got to be. You have to be specific with the chapter and verse that you're asking about. I see. It's in Second Ezra, the seventh chapter. I see where it says um, would put the case the entrance where would put the case the entrance were narrow and like a river. Second Ezra seven. Do you have a specific verse? Or are you just asking in general? It, it's it, it's in that chapter. I just couldn't find it. Um, the specific verse says, uh, it says they'll be looking at the city, looking at the city, six and seven entrance. That, that is it. Well, that is, there's a verse that says they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, that, that's in the New Testament. Yeah, that's the New Testament. There's one in the New Testament. All right. Okay, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll message you the verse uh, when I find uh, it. So, like, I think that what you're talking about, brother, uh, uh, Nathan, yeah, that's Revelation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't see it in Second Ezra seven. So when you have it, just um, just raise your hand or shout it out. But no, it's so like just um, just raise your hand when you get the the scripture. Um, any other questions? All right, if there are no other questions. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my topic. All right. Uh, protests. Protests have never gotten any nation out of slavery, but separation will. Okay, separation and understanding separation, it would have um, it would have made things go a lot smoother. First thing, the number one thing is during the during the coronavirus, right? What blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians need to know and need to understand is the Most High is cutting you off from these nations. He was giving us the time to have rest where we never had rest in Canada. Never had rest in Canada. All right, since we got here off the boats, off the planes, etc. All right, he's giving us rest in in um, on the reserves. We, we, were ne we never got rest. All right, what we have continued to do is we've continued to act like Canadians. We've continued to smoke weed and get high. I heard the whoring hasn't slowed down. It has slowed down. All right, that's a good thing. All right, but we we need to stop acting like Canadians and protesting and having uprest, uh, unrest, and un uprising or what have you. That in and of itself, the marching and all of that, that is um, that is American. That is Canadian. All right. I'm going to get the definition of the word march real quick to show you just what you're dealing with. OK, get me a scripture. Somebody look up march in their concordance. You can go to Blue Letter Bible or you can go to your concordance online and type in M-A-R-C-H, march. OK. There's, it's like this, there's a verse that says the word march in it. Absolutely, it should be. Okay, Con. Okay, uh, you want the verse or the definition? Verse. Okay. What the other terms? Con. Um, I have a cut. 
312. Uh, thou didn't march through the land in indignation. Thou, thou didn't there is there is the heathen in anger. Hold on one second. I can't I can't really hear you. I you to call out what, what scripture are you at? Uh, All right, go ahead. Now this march broke through the land in indignation. Now this, there is the heathen. Now, okay, this scripture says march, right? But again, the marching that's done here is not pleading, it's not begging anyone. The scriptures say this, to lead not a beggar's life. Don't right. go to another man, to another nation and say, please, master, will you please be nice to me? The ISUBK is not trying to get you a nicer slave master in Canada. The ISUBK is trying to make you a slave master. Okay? That's what we're, that's what we're working for. Right. Okay? We're not interested in making, you know, make, putting you on an equal playing field with the slave master. We're not interested in police reform. We're not interested in any of that. Okay, we're interested in blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians ruling under the one the world calls Christ. The scriptures say this, that thou didst march. All right, bear with me one second. Who marched? The Lord. This is in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse uh, 3. It says, God came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Okay, this is the Most High. The Most High, or the one you call God, the authority, Okay, this is like a um, a victory song. You've ever seen the scene when uh, World well, after World War II when the armies would come back home and they would march and people would shout their name and you know throw you know beads at them and stuff like that. This is this is a song of the victory march, all right, of the nation of Israel after we destroy the other nation. Those guys came from Teman. Who, who lived in Teman? The Edomites and Paran. Paran is a mountain in Arabia. Okay, the Lord is going to destroy as a precept. The Lord is going to destroy Esau and the Arabs. Why is that significant? Because you've got wars in the Middle East between Edomites over here and Edomites in Iran mixed in with uh, the Ishmaelites. Okay, the native the native Arabs over there. Okay, the Most High is going to destroy both of them. That's in Habakkuk chapter three, verse three. Okay, they fight in the Middle East, Edom and Ishmael. Okay, Teman and Paran. That's in Hebrew. Or Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 3 is where we're reading. All right. So in verse 12, where it says he's, uh, um, one second. Thou didst march. He marched through the land, all right. He marched in indignation, in, in fierce anger. He marched. In fierce anger. And he threshed the heathen in anger. While he's marching, he's threshing people, cueing them, and cutting them, cutting them, cutting them up. All right. Literally, so that's the kind of marching that should be that we should want that we sh that we should, you know, look for. Anybody going out to march non-violently or violently with this beast is an idiot. Okay, how how are you going to try and get justice when you marching with the people that destroyed George Floyd? God. And made sure he there were drugs in his neighborhood. You marching with the people, okay, that benefited based off your slavery. Black Lives Matter protests with Somalians in it. Give me a damn break. I'm sure it was full of that uh, in uh, Toronto. Okay? So much, so much, so much Mogadishu, I thought a helicopter was going to crash. That's what I was looking for. Black Hawk down Toronto. Somalians have gathered, gathered and, uh, uh, and, and have suited up with RPGs. Okay? Black Hawk down. All right? With all the damn Samoan bobblehead and, and Barack Hussein Obama in the damn crowd with us, they benefited off our slavery, man. You had uh, uh, ports where um, they were shipping our brothers from East Africa. Okay, if you go check out videos, there's a video on uh, Afro Mexicans. They asked them, you know, where your ancestors come from. They're saying they came from uh, uh, East Africa, Ethiopia. Okay, so they were shipping the Negroes from there over to Mexico. All right, the tribe of um, Mainly, but also as well in amongst them, okay, in Mexico to this day, okay, so they, these nations benefited off our slavery. What are we doing marching with them? The Lord said he's going to thresh the heathen in anger. So so why are you hit to hit with uh, 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 Babu Mudijalo, 
Okay, why are you hip to hip with uh, 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 Matumbo? Okay, it's a damn shame. And why are we hip to hip with, with uh, uh, Mustadi Punjabi? Okay, and Gupta. All right, and, and you know, the, the curry and sweat. Why are we hip to hip with them? Okay, they shouldn't be in our uh, Black Lives Matter protest, no way. And like I said on, on the Rochester class, Again, like uh, uh, if I could go off on a tangent, the Lord is marching, threshing the heathen in his anger. He's marching for all the 12 tribes of Israel. Black Lives Matter, you know, it's half assing it, half stepping. You got to bring in all the tribes. You got to come correct, man. Blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians lives matter. First Nations and Negro lives matter. And so called Latino lives. Okay. There are not enough. Uh, native, uh, there are not enough Latino voters, so there is no Honduran Lives Matter protest. There is no El Salvadoran Lives Matter because there are not enough Hispanic voters in Canada in America. Black people for decades have voted heavily in this country, in this country being uh, the United States, so that's why there's a Black Lives Matter. Because, again, they make merchandise off of you. They make, you know, politicians and politics based on the movement of, of so-called black people. That's the only reason why you're hearing about Black Lives Matter. But Black Lives Matter needs to bring in the so-called Latinos and First Nations as well. The Lord's gonna march and thresh in his indignation against the heathen for what they've done to blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, okay? This whole family of Israel, we have personalities, different tastes in music. A lot of the so-called Latinos like heavy metal. I'm just figuring that out. All right, yes. do do your thing, whatever. A lot of the so-called a lot of so-called first nations like um, uh, rock music over there in Western Canada. Do your thing. Your father's so-called native, and you're an Israelite. Okay, many different flavors. You get my point. Personalities, many different shades, many different colors. Okay, but we're one family. All right, and so saying Black Lives Matter is again separating the different tribes. Okay. Some, of the, you, some cats in the tribe of Judah don't um, think they're black. You get my point? Like Drake's son. Drake's son is in hell. <laughs> okay? Okay? But he's a, um, a Judite. All right? The Lord's going to march when he destroys nations. Everyone understand? Uh, 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 right. The word march, comes. It's a, it's a military term. All right? Bear with me one second. Uh, so that's yeah, like, so if I may, if I, oh, I'm saying I'm not here. I was, I was um, to, yeah, Joel chapter two, verse seven, fake Israelite groups use the scripture to, to justify their march. Uh, the IUIC, all right, they use the scripture to have their, um, to have, um, I, I don't know what it is, whatever march that is, that march is a sin. And I'm going to show you everything. All right, that march is an absolute one of the many sins that they commit. All right, go to Joel 2 and 7. They use the scripture to say that they can go and walk around different cities and uh, look like uh, civil rights protesters. Read the scripture. Can I, can I know come, sir? Jo, Joel chapter 2, verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall, they shall run climb like walls. mighty men. Okay, not half, you know, walking through a damn city. Okay. They shall uh -huh. run like mighty men. When are you running like a mighty man? You're running like a mighty man when you're in battle, okay? Right. This isn't you taking a leisurely stroll around Memphis. This isn't you right. driving around <laughs> Chicago. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a sprint. This is a war. Read on. Khan. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall yep. climb the wall like men of war. You climb a wall to go and kill. That's what men of war do. You climb a wall to assault a city, to assault a fortress. Okay? That's the next criteria for this march. Read on. And they shall march. Everyone is everyone on this way. They shall march everyone on his ways. Okay? Doing what? Running and climbing. Read on. Canada one gone. And they shall not break their ranks. You see that? They shall not break their ranks. Meaning what? In this war that's going to come in the end, 
we're going to be together. We're going to run like mighty men, and we're going to climb the wall like men of war, okay? We're going to march. We're going to be on a war path. All right. We're not going to break our ranks. There is going to be no, oh, wait a minute. I'm I'm uh, MS-13. You're 18th Street Gang, man. F you. There's going to be none of that. There's going to be no, you crit, I'm blood. You see walking out of the ranks. Walking out of the ranks, man. F you. I'm crit walking out. Okay. There's going to be none of that. There's going to be no Latin King and GD and any of that nonsense. There's going to be no Democrat and Republican. There's going to be no, I voted for Trudeau and you voted for Singh. There's going to be none of that nonsense. We're going to march and no one's going to break their ranks. There's going to be no mutiny or any of that nonsense for dissent. All right. Uh, marching yeah. and running like mighty men. Scripture is yeah. talking yeah. about you walking around and chanting, okay, and calling it a march. <laughs> All right. So that. Uh, but. So like, so, so like, Officer Adiar, did you have to say something before I go? Oh yeah, Officer Adiar, go ahead. La, la. Oh no. Okay, go no, ahead. The, 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 we just read it. I was I was gonna bring. All right, the water. Go ahead, Trooper Darash. Um, I just had um in Joel two. Um, I was under the impression that well, well I, I wasn't sure. I wanted to ask. That, and you brought it up and it just reminded me, but is when it talks about these people marching and climbing up walls, is that talking about us or is that talking about the nations that were invading Jerusalem at the time? That's talking, that's talking, this whole chapter is talking about us. Go to, if you go to, um, uh, cause yeah, that's talking about, that's talking about verse, that's talking about us. In verse one, it says, blow ye a trumpet in Zion. Okay. And sound an alarm in my uh, uh, holy mountain. The Lord's going to set the alarm. The Lord's going to set it all in his holy mountain, blowing a trumpet in Zion. Okay? One second. Uh, the exact verse I'm, I'm having confusion with is verse 2. Okay, go ahead. It's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong and a strong there hath not been ever the light, neither shall there be any more after, even the years of many generations. That's talking about us? Yeah, that's talking about us. Bear with me one second. Okay, go on. Um. Okay. Bear with me one second. Boom. Yeah, it's talking about that's talking about us destroying and going about and destroying, even though we were, you know, getting killed and being destroyed by armies before. All right. That that scripture there, that scripture is these scriptures are talking about uh, the nation of Israel. That's how it was broken down. Um that's how it was broken down to me. This is talking about the nation of Israel after Christ or Yahweh Shai's return. All right, that we will be like that will be like, you know, never before. It won't be an army or, or crew after the 144,000 and the army that goes about with us. And there won't be one ever again. All right. Okay. Running and climbing and jumping and just destroying. All right. Okay. And why the people of Zion, why are we weeping? Why is there, you know, gloominess? Because this is not a good day. Right. Like, like, like the day that's coming is going to have so much un, like so much gore that is going to traumatize you. That's why the scriptures say, uh, hide thou in my secret chambers a little while till, till the indignation be passed. The killing is just going to be over the top. Like we said last week or on, I said on Thursday, the killing that Yahweh is going to do on this earth is going to be absolutely over the top. OK. And the men that are going to go about on this earth doing the killing. There's gonna there's there is no running from this. You get my point. The scriptures say that mm -hmm. the Lord sends for many fishers, and one day He will send for many hunters, and they shall fish them, hunt them. Excuse me, they shall hunt them out of the holes. All right, we're gonna come to your bunker, rip the lid off, and put you in slavery. Okay, all the nations that have put us in slavery, and um, we're, right. gonna ability, we're gonna have the ability to do it. All right, so that's talking so about us. 
So long, kid, sir. But can uh for for the killing of that Christ is gonna do, can you use uh Revelation 14 and 20? Read. Khan out one Khan. Revelation 14 and 20. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press even onto the horse's bridle. Yeah, and that that's that is the that's a, a direct precept for the amount of killing he's going to do. Blood's gonna come up to the horse's bridle. Horse is three, four feet tall. The, the one you call Christ is gonna do so much killing that the, the, the Middle East is just gonna become a pool of blood. There's a scripture in Ezekiel where it says. We're going to be burying the army of Magog, the Russian army, for I think it's like a year or something. Wow. They'll, just be, they'll just be finding bodies and burying them. That's what's going to happen. The Russian army is going to be totally taken out. They have one of the largest armies in the world. The United States army is going to be wiped out. Those little stupid Arabs, ISIS and the Hezbollah, all those <laughs> knuckleheads are going to get—they're going to get smacked in their teeth. Their blood's going to go up to the horses' bridles and the state of Israel too. There's going to be some chutzpah in there. Okay, and uh, um, matzah, matzah kings in that blood. Okay, the one you call Christ is going to make quick work of this earth. All right, and he's not he's not marching. He's not asking for equality. He's not standing with a picket fence. Give me that scripture. He shall not abase himself on the topic of these protests. Protesting, all right, to your slave master to be nicer. Going up to cops and holding their hands. Did you see those scenes? Where Negroes are holding police officers' hand and praying with them, that's not what that's not uh, uh, the spirit of Christ, that's the spirit of the Antichrist, that's the spirit of this, this place. I mean, he shall not abase himself, he, he, shall, he shall not abase himself, yeah, that's in the scripture. That's in the scripture. Let me, um, Ezekiel, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 31 and 4. Um, I have it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Isaiah 31 and 4. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice. Yeah, he's just, the Lord's gonna be he's gonna be just like a, a lion, a young lion on his prey. When you know you got shepherds coming out there to yell and scream at the lion to get the lion to move away, the lion doesn't give a damn about that. And the Lord's going to be just like that lion; He's not going to give a, give a damn about you know what you have to say. You, okay, when the Lord comes down for judgment, when He sends out you know the men of the Most High to speak, okay, to speak His words, our people come out like a shepherd. So people come, people of all nations come out like a shepherd and try and save and try and stop judgment. Okay, from coming down on this beast. Okay, and and the Most High doesn't give a damn about what they have to say. We don't give a damn about what you have to say about it. Okay, uh, just just like a shepherd calling and yelling at a lion, the lion's not going to stop. He's going to tear that prey up. Okay, <laughs> and this is you saying, uh, uh, just like that brother in Minneapolis to the officer, so like the officer would not shy young. He got a boot kick. You saw the video, and the people. Nick Rose said that we he got a boot kiss. We, we're not doing that here. We're not doing that. We're not for that here. Well, Christ, Yahweh Shai, and the one you call God, they are for that. They are for that. The most high is going to be like a lion when shepherds try to yell him, yell him away from the prey. He isn't going to care what they have to say. Read on. Nor base himself for the noise of them. He's not going to become bashful for the noises of them. He's not going to say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I am kind of, you know, I am kind of radical, right? I'm God. You know, I'm kind of radical, kind of mean, right? Talk about blood and guts. I'll be quiet. I'm sorry, guys. He's not going to do any of that. He's not going to tone it down. He's not going to change it. Do you think he could change the message a little bit? Don't you think there are some good cops? Well, I got a question for you. Were there good Nazis? I'll ask him that. Were there good Nazis? Watch it. Watch his head explode. Watch a mini nuclear explosion occur on the top of his head. Boom. Okay, his head blown, and he, he'll probably just walk away. They'll probably just walk away from you. Ask them: Are there were there good Nazis? Here, there were good Nazis. There were Nazis. There were just you know rank and file, 
Irish. They uh, um, polished their swastika off, shine their boots, and they went to war to get a paycheck to feed their family in Yugoslavia, in the Czech Republic. But here's the problem. The Nazis were mass murderers, okay? And when the Nuremberg trials came, you didn't have a problem, all right, with getting them punished, with punishing them, with making the Nazis a bad name. You get my point? Making anyone with the name Nazi uh, um, associated with white supremacy, associated with mass murder. Well, the police in America and in Canada are associated with mass murder. All of them. All of them. I don't give a damn. The ones that are coming home to North York to give a paycheck. I don't care the ones that are in Regent Park playing basketball with the kids. I don't give a damn about any of them. The ones taking pictures of the little poor West Indian Negroes in, in Toronto. All of them are part of the mass murderous a terrorist organization known as the fraternal order of police and once again if you don't believe me uh, if you don't believe that the canadian police force is in on it there's an organization go and look it up this organization is called interpol i-n-t-e-r-p-o-l if you saw the um the movie the, the uh lord of war with nicholas cage where he's selling guns god you know that boat remember Inter interpol came on the boats you had a uh, uh, hawk He's a pretty good actor too. That devil, uh, uh, Ethan Hawke. All right, he was in Training Day. I like that movie. Remember that movie, Training Day. All right. right. Ethan right. Hawke, Interpol. Interpol came. Interpol is an international, you know, union of police officers. Mm -hmm. Okay, the American police force, English police force, Canadian police force are all a part of a, uh, the system known as Interpol, meaning they have the ability to communicate with each other. That's what Interpol did in March. During after, you know, a huge spike in police killings in the United States right before the coronavirus. Interpol declared uh, on March 4th, a month or a day or something, remembering fallen police officers. Not remembering all the people that the police, mm -hmm. okay, the police killed in Canada. Not remembering all the First Nations, but all the police officers. They don't give a damn about you, whether it's Canadian police, whether it's American police, whether it's British police. They all work together. All of them, all of those uh, uh, police officers in Toronto could get in the Interpol conference, whatever they have, and 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 um, cut the American cops. They could do it. They could say, look, man, what you're doing in America is giving us a bad name. You're making us look like the damn Gestapo. Could you chill out? I'm just trying to feed my kids in North York. Can you chill out? They don't do that. They don't do that. Nobody steps to America, man. And uh, yes, all police are bad. All of them, even the good ones. You know why? Yeah. Because all the bad right. ones murder four people and they'll be on the same damn force. Okay, that yeah. cat that killed George Floyd is a serial killer. He killed two other people and had 18 complaints. You have 18 complaints as a cop in America, you deny unto ISIS. Okay? Yeah. Because just, just to file a complaint, it takes, you know, effort. So they must have did something that was, you know, just over the top. And for the police force to not throw it out, it was just over the top. All right. And Yahweh is going to enact death on this earth. He's going to do killing on a scale that you cannot even comprehend. Why? For all the things that you, that you don't know about. You're going to get mad, right? You're going to throw a brick for George Floyd. What about Racy Taylor? It was gang raped by five devils in Alabama. Do you remember that? No, you were going about your day in Toronto. You couldn't care about that. When George Floyd died, you're ready to throw a brick for a retribution. There are 64,000 black women that are missing, nowhere to be found in the United States. Where do you think they're going? To sweep floors and, you know, uh, um, to make furniture and become carpenters? No. They're going into the movie Taken. That's where they're going. Okay. The Russian, Batsava. They're going to Russia and every cook and mostly uh, crevices in Africa to become housemaids. And uh, breeders, okay? Uh, uh, because the African, even though he comes to Toronto, that African, he doesn't want to get with with Ikembe over here in Toronto. He wants your woman, okay? and they're snatching him up off the streets in America, snatching up the tribe of Judah, along with other tribes in the states. All right, stuff like that you don't even know about, okay? That's what he's going to get justice for, and that's why the blood is going to be up to the horses bridles. So do you want to just throw a rock for George Floyd or you want to wait till the most high punishes them for everything, everything that they've done? I want it all. I don't want to break through a window. I don't want one cop to get, I don't want one cop to get to, you know, to go to jail, whatever Negroes think. 
I want this place to be destroyed by the most high. Okay. Yeah. And protesting never worked. And on the topic of Canada, I'm going to go into some history for you. All right. Canada was never for black people. Okay. I doubt that was right. ever like that black lives matter protest. I doubt they brought up any of the history you're about to read. All right. Or you're about to hear. This is from Oklahoma Historical Society. I'll have the scriptures on deck. Give me Psalm. Iraq, give me Psalm 107 and 4. Officer Adiar. Get me Psalm 83 and 3. Uh, uh, Nathan, get me uh, Ezekiel 34 and 6. Uh, Illich, get me um, Psalm 37 and 12. Zabadia, get me Lamentations 3 and 46. All right. All these scriptures we're going to get. We're going to read you his the history of Canada. All right. Canada, throughout their history, has hated so-called black people. We're going to show it to you. Um, between 1897 and 1911, Clifford Sifton, Canadian Minister of the Interior, actively promoted immigration to Western Canada. So he was saying, look, come to Western Canada. He was recruiting different groups of people for immigration to Canada, right? Offering free land to prospective immigrants from Western and Northern Europe and the United States. So he was advertising it to white people. All right, let's read on. African Americans from Oklahoma enthusiastically responded. There was a system known as Jim Crow that was enacted in the United States. It was a system of you know terroristic and, and discriminatory laws in the United States. One of the good things that it did is that it kept us separate from our slave master. So separate that drug use, it wasn't even a part of black culture until the 60s when we integrated. 60s, okay. When we um, but Many of the, uh, the tribe of Judah, so-called black people in Oklahoma, were fleeing the Ku Klux Klan racial terrorism in the United States. We came up to uh, Alberta as well as uh, Saskatchewan, but let's read on. All right. One second. When Oklahoma became a state in 1907, William H. Murray, president of the Constitutional Convention that united Indian Territory and Oklahoma Territory, remarked, it, it is an entirely false notion that the Negro can rise to the equal of a white man in the professions or become an equal citizen to grapple with public questions. You're never an equal, man. This is 1907. 1907, they said we weren't an equal. And it's 2020. 110 years later, not a damn thing changed in the United States. Not a damn thing changed in Canada, but let's read on. Matter of fact, um, someone read me Psalm 107 and 4. Whoever had that, I believe it's Darash, right? Read. Come on, come on. Psalm chapter 107, verse 4. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. All right, we find no place to dwell in. Why? Because nobody wants us. <laughs> you get my point? We wander from city to city. They didn't know what to do with the first nations that weren't exterminated, so they said, let's come on, on concentration camp. Trailer park and some booze, okay? Trailer park, booze, and some meth, and some whores to make them calm down every once in a while, all right? Actually, what they did with the First Nations all throughout the, the states and in Canada, all right? And with us, so-called Negroes, all right, we'll, um, uh, we'll make a deal with, with uh, the, the crown, the Queen of England. We'll establish banks here in exchange for... Uh, allowing West End, more West Indians and Haitians to come to Canada. They made deals and traded you like, like corn, okay? That's why some went to the UK, some went to Canada, all right? Because we're still slaves of the crown, all right? So that's what, is, that's what it is. We've wandered aimlessly, all right? We wandered into Canada. Let me read on this document. In 1908, Canada instituted a restrictive immigration policy to curtail black immigration. That was enacted in 1908 to curtail black immigration. All right. They instituted restrictive immigration policies and they didn't want us in the States. And they took hefty counsel against us. How do we know they don't want us today? You see it by what you live in. Go look outside and see the hellhole that we live in out there. Okay. Yep. In some places in Montreal, Cain and Fink, Regent Park. Those, those, you can't live there. You can't raise kids there <laughs> and have them not get into drugs. You can't raise, raise a family. You can't raise a family and not get jumped on the way to school. 
not get shot in the entertainment district like Houdini. You can't live and operate like a normal human being. You're going to die. You want to get into drugs. Why is it like that? Is that uh, random? No. They made sure that where we live was inhospitable so we can leave. They would prefer, on one hand, for us to go back to Africa. But on the other hand, they can't operate without us. You saw that when many of you were made essential workers. Okay? They immigrated. They instituted restrictive immigration policies to curtail black immigration. They never wanted black people in Canada, man. Jane and Finch is the proof. Regent Park is the proof. Winnipeg is the proof. Edmonton is the proof. All right. Many areas of Vancouver where we, where we live is the proof. Like it, Inhospitable. Go ahead. It's like even for the Benjamites, they only allow us up here to do farm work. Yeah, they're only, they're only coming up there to do farm work, to pick corn or plant corn or to dig yeah. holly. To help with the irrigation, small water, help with the wine, right? You got they have um a lot of uh, wine fields right out there in Ontario. That whole alley going up Lake Ontario is a uh, wine country. All right, the West Indians coming up to be slaves, be field hands, literally, in 2020. Okay, between 1908 and 1911, more than 1,000 African American Oklahomans sold their farms and migrated to. Alberta or Saskatchewan. All right, we sold our farm and moved to Alberta and Saskatchewan. Okay, get me um Psalm eighty three and three. All right, this is the crafty counsel they took against us. Barely allow us in country. And when we come up here, they make the places we live largely inhospitable. Poverty and then crime. Read. Read. This is Psalm 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Yeah, they took crafty counsel against us. How are we going to destroy these Negroes? They're having counsels about it. They're having talks about how to keep the First Nations at bay. They took crafty counsel against us. They had counsels about how to stop black people from coming to Canada. All right? Read on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Consulted against thy hidden ones. Where are the hidden ones? West Indians are the hidden ones. The earth things are African, the Shanti, whatever nut, mud hut African group you want to name. Okay. So called Negroes in America believe they're Africans. All right. We're the hidden ones. Right? Our identity is hidden. They consult against us by merging. Uh, uh, Negroes with the Somalians so heavily. Negroes, West Indians with uh, uh, Cameroonians so heavily. They have nothing to do with us. They're the, the same slave master. Okay, they just didn't benefit, okay, off their African privilege. Poor uh, uh, Russians, poor right. Ukrainians in our neighborhood because they didn't benefit poor Frenchmen in our neighborhood because they didn't benefit off of white privilege. Okay. Um, read on. Verse, verse 4, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Is, if Canada wasn't going to accept us, we were going to get, you know, swallowed up by the Klan. They didn't care about that. Why? Because they don't want us to be a nation. They don't want us to be a unit, cohesive. Canada would have would allowed us to just, you know, wander through America and just be murdered under the terrorist system that was going on there and terrorist groups like the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Yeah. Read verse five. Canada one come verse five. For they have consulted together with one consent. They consult. They get together with one consent. Okay. They they hate each other. The Chinese hate the Canadians. The Canadians hate the Chinese. Arabs, Iranians hate the Americans. They all get together. South Africans, right. etc. They all get together and do what? Read on. Khan, they are confederate against thee. They are all together to be against you. Read on. Khan, verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom. Tabernacles of Edom. He's one of them. Read on. Khan, and the Ishmaelites. So those are the people that are against us. Uh, um, Canadians, all right, so-called Europeans, Arabs, etc. Okay. Um, Ezekiel 34 and 6, read it. 
Hallowed or Khan. My sheep wandered through all the mountains. We mind, we wandered through all the mountains and all the governments. You got a country on the earth, okay? More than likely, Israelites wandered through it, okay? In America, in Canada, if you look up the um, main industry of, I think it's Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan, the main industry of Uzbekistan is cotton. How did cotton get to Uzbekistan? <laughs> because W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, uh, George Washington Carver, and so-called black people went to Soviet Russia and showed them how to plant cotton in a, a dry land like uh, Uzbekistan. You can go look that up. I did not make that up. The child of Judah went to Soviet Russia to teach them how to plant and build cotton. To this day, cotton is the main export of Uzbekistan. We wander aimlessly through every mountain. Japan, uh, Canada, United States. Okay. We tried to wander to Canada. They damn near closed the doors on us. Read on. Khan out of one Khan. And upon every high hill. And upon every high hill. Every every mountain, right? Tall, big government. The United States. Uh, uh, Canada, Brazil, Japan. The UK, France. And every high hill. What's a high hill? Smaller governments. All right. Uzbekistan. Liberia. Uh, uh, Cuba. Okay. Puerto Rico. Give me some more. Um, Chile. Wandering all throughout those countries. Read on. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the faces of the earth. We're scattered upon all the faces of the earth. So-called Negroes in China, Russia, Canada, Brazil, Chile, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Trinidad, okay, Japan, etc. Read on. And none did search or seek after them. None searched or seek sought after them. Like they see the Ku Klux Klan hanging us from trees. They didn't seek after us. They closed the door on us. Canada did. And Canada is going to be destroyed for that, man. The scriptures right. say this. Anyone that blesseth thee shall be blessed. And anyone that curseth thee shall be cursed. By locking you into America, right. they damn near, they just writing you off to die. Okay. The Ku Klux Klan ran the areas where we lived. I mean, it was just like, you know, like, like the way they say ISIS runs a the town. They would just come in and... You know, they would establish the law. All right. And they kill at will and steal and, and do everything in the name of Christianity, in the name of Jesus. OK, they would kill and murder Negroes. All right. Let's read on in this article. This is from the Oklahoma Historical Society, African-American exodus to Canada. Um, boom. Some Canadian whites vociferously opposed black immigration. So they were against it, slave masters in Canada. Between, one second, considering black immigrants to be poor farmers and bad citizens. In 1911, you fresh, you two generations out of slavery, they thought of you already as a bad citizen. You weren't even a citizen for 40 years. <laughs> you were a bad citizen since 1911. You were a thug and a gangbanger since 1911, 1908. The hell do you think? What do we do? What do we think marching is going to do? Change that? This is the belief they have for us is centuries old. They considered black immigrants to be poor farmers and bad citizens. Whoever has um, Psalm 37 and 12, read that. Gone on concert. Go ahead. Gone. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth. In his way, because of the men who bring wicked devices to pass. That's Psalm 37 and 12. Oh, Salak, yes, sir. I'll oh, go ahead. That was 37, that was 37 and 7. Um, Read verse 12. I got 37 and 12 for you here. Salak, yes, sir. Chapter 12, or chapter 37, verse 12. The wicked plotted against the just. See that the wicked plotteth against the just. 
you're the just. So-called West Indians and Latinos in Toronto, First Nations, are the just. And they plot upon you, man. A so-called uh, gangbanger, gangster in Chicago, came out on YouTube and said it, that the, the Chicago police are dumping crates of guns, okay, that can't be traced in alleyways in Chicago at 6 in the morning. He's getting woken up out of his sleep. Yo, man, they got a dump military-grade weapons in the alleyway out in the back of Chicago. Some back alley in Chicago in areas that are predominantly African-American. You you can think they're not doing that in Canada if you want and be dumb, okay? How do you have so many guns in one area, all right? Police have to be involved, nor the way it gets there. It gets 3D printed and, and shipped. Right. Okay? And, and established by the government. It's allowed. Why? Because the wicked plot against the just. We're the just. We're the people that have the ability to establish justice. Okay? And they plot against us and they mask on us with their teeth. That's why Guantanamo South is filled with Negroes, Latinos, and First Nations. All right? So um, read Lamentations 3 and 46, whoever has it. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 46 on this. Okay? They gnash on us with their teeth and they've worked constantly to keep us out of Canada, let alone treat us like a damn human being. You call the cops, you can get your daughter tossed out of a 24 floor window. Okay. That's this place. Read on. Lamentations 3 and 46. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. All our enemies opened their mouth against us. They said, what about you 100 years ago? You were poor farmers and bad citizens. What are some code words they use? These thugs in urban areas, inner city youth, they're not talking about uh, uh, Matatumbe Giala when they talk about inner city youth, okay? <laughs> they're talking about uh, 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 Percival, Jean Jacques, okay? And uh, Mr. Jones, that's who they're talking about. And James White, that's who they're talking about in urban areas, <laughs> okay? Urban youth, these criminals, these thugs, these super predators. OK, they open their mouth against us, man, when all we do is come up here and be farmers. All we do is come up here and pick your damn crops in the States. The tribe of Benjamin doing it in Canada. The tribe of Issachar doing it in the United States and Zebulun. And they open their mouths against us. Right. Dare to call the they dare to call the looters uh, uh, uncivilized. You were uncivilized when you looted this country from the First Nations, Canada. You were uncivilized when you looted this country from the First Nations, America. Nobody wants to talk about that, though. The Lord is going to talk about it. He's going to bring it up. And these riots are the beginning of much more to come. Um, did you finish Lamentations 3 and 46? Khan, I don't want All right. Um, Zabadi, get me, go to Lamentations 2 and 16. Um, Nathan, get me Job 16 and 10. Job chapter 16, verse 10. Uh, Illich, get me, uh, young man, Illich, get me, um, Psalm 35, 21. Psalms chapter 35 and verse 21. Um, Darash, get me Psalm 109 and 2. Psalm 109 and 2. Adiar, get me Hosea 8, 8 and 8. Hosea 8 and 8. We're gonna go crash course through the scriptures on uh, just how they've treated us. And how they've opened their mouths against us since David. And marching and pleading with them isn't going to change it. But calling on the Lord to march against them in battle, that will change it. The coronavirus shut them up a little bit. It made them slow down. It made them release their boot off your neck as much as they did. Come in here. Quincy, you better come in here at 8 o'clock. 8 a.m. sharp. Denisha, you're 15 minutes late. Gonna fire you. Okay. It took their now now there is no job. There is no there is no phone call to Denisha now. Okay. Why? Because the business is shut down, thanks to the most high. Lamentations two and sixteen. Go ahead. Con out one con. Lamentations two and sixteen. All thine enemies have opened their mouths against thee. All all our enemies have opened their mouths against us. You have enemies, so-called black man, within Canada. You have enemies, so-called uh, First Nations, and your enemy is not your brother. Okay? Read on. His hiss and gnat 
and gnash. They hiss and gnash. Read it again. They say we have swallowed her up. They say we've swallowed her up, man. Okay, we destroyed. They hiss and, and gnash the teeth. They gnash their teeth. Gnashing your teeth is like, when you're so mad, to you grind your teeth together. They have absolute anger and hatred for you. And that's how, excuse me, that's how a woman can fall off a 24th floor balcony. That's how crates of guns can make it to Chicago. That's how you're 20 times more likely to be killed by the police. That's how when you walk in through a neighborhood, two off-duty cops can, can beat you until your eyeball falls out like DeFonte Miller. That's how they can roll up on you in Montreal and shoot and kill you without asking questions, just like what happened to Freddie Villanueva. That's how they can shoot a so-called First Nations woman, okay, when she when she had a knife. Uh, Officer Adiar, get me that article as well. The, the sister that got murdered by the police up there, the New Brunswick, was it, is it New Brunswick? Yeah, NB. Uh, New, the New Brunswick uh, First Nations woman, so-called First Nations that was shot and killed by the police. Let's mention her name. All right, because these stories need to be brought out. Like, like the police murdering us happens every day. Okay, they gnash their teeth against us. Go ahead. Excuse me. They say, um, I'll read it. They say we have swallowed her up. They say they've destroyed us. Let's give them welfare. Let's make the Toronto Housing Authority. Let's give them public housing. Let's give them low income housing. They say we've been swallowed up. You can't afford a house. You can't afford food. Right. Certainly, this is the day that we look for. That's the day they look for. The day they look for is the day we're impoverished. The day they look for is the day we're, uh, uh, you know, one, one third of the arrests made in Canada are First Nations. It's either the arrests or prosecution, something like this, some ridiculous number. When the First Nations are what, 5% of the nation's population? They just, yeah, that, that means they're arresting the First Nations at will. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found it. We have seen it. Anyway, they vision this. They've been looking and waiting to destroy you. This is this is 1900, 1910. This policy was put in place to keep blacks, so-called blacks, from immigrating to Canada. All right. Uh, Job 16 and 10. Read. Canada and Con. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon thy cheek reproachfully. Right. They, they smote DeFonte Miller upon his cheek reproachfully. They did that to brothers and sisters all across Canada. They smote that sister. They killed that sister reproachfully. Reproach means with hate. You hate that sister, man. She came out with a knife. She's a, a little First Nations woman. Okay. 110, 115 pounds. Sir, Zalaka, sir. Go ahead. Uh, her name was Chantel Moore, and, and they shot her five times. Chantel Moore, they shot her five times. Now, if you're a little, uh, you're a woman with a knife, and, and they just afraid because you have a knife, they might, again, you'll get shot once. Not five times, not 16 times, not put their knee on your neck for 10 minutes. You passed dead, passed expired, okay? And, and while the paramedics are trying to revive them, he still got his foot on their neck. Like the paramedics didn't go, look, man. He, he look, get off him. We're trying to check his pulse. He still got his knee on his neck. Okay? They smite us reproachfully with hate. Do the police kill white people in Canada? Sure they do. Sure they do. Do they beat up white people and Asians in Canada? Sure they do. They smite us reproachfully. It's personal with the so-called Negro. It's personal with the so-called First Nations. It is about race, and it is their hatred for us. Why? Because they know in their spirit that we are the 12 tribes of Israel and we're soon to rule this place. Right. Chantel, Chantel Moore shot five times, man. A straight up, a straight up execution. Gangster style. A straight up murder. Okay? She a little woman with a gun. You can't disarm her. You got pepper spray, tasers, baton, got all that on his belt. He's going to, she's going to shoot and kill her. Again, so-called First Nations, do not call the police in Canada. So-called Negroes, do not call the police. Call the ISUPK. The head officer out of the call. Okay, that woman, uh, Regis Korczynski, she'd still be alive. She'd still be, you know, doing her gymnastics, whatever she's doing, her stretches and flips, 
and whatever else. Going to the gym or, or she can't go to the gym now. No one can go to the gym now because it's closed. But, uh, you know, jogging North York or jogging downtown, right? You'd be somewhere alive doing, you know, stretches on the lawn of, of High Park or Highland Park, whatever the name was, uh, the place where she died. She'd still be alive because she called a 1,000 pound gorilla in to kill a, a, a mouse. <laughs> they just tore the whole house up. You call on a 1,000 pound gorilla to kill mice when you call on the cops against drug dealers. Okay? He's a, he's a gorilla coming to kill some mice. He's going to tear the whole house up. You get my point? Oh, yeah. Like so called Negroes, we can handle the problem with drug dealers ourselves and gangs and all that other nonsense ourselves. Okay? And all what I'm saying, every other race in Canada does it. Slave masters out there in the rural areas, they don't call the cops. East Indians in their own neighborhoods and their enclaves of Canada, Chinatown. <laughs> the cops out in Chinatown. Go see, go, go, go check it. Go do some homework. Go to right. Chinatown when they lift the sanctions and go watch the cops in Chinatown. You won't see them. You will not see them. They'll be posted. They'll be they might be posted up. They don't go down there the way they are policing. That's true. Uh, uh, Jane Finch, Jane Strip. They're not down there harassing them because the Chinese don't call the cops. Your woman calls the cops on you in an argument, you know, and, and they call the cops. These Negroes are out here selling drugs. They're in the stairwell selling drugs and smoking weed. So the cops going to be there. The problem is that he's a murderer. All right. We've been telling you, we've been warning you about this. How long have you heard this? In the eyes should be kidding. Since you've been here in the stream, right? Since you've been hearing us in these classes, this is the history of Canada. All right. Uh, Psalm 3521. Go. Got our own concert. Yeah. Okay. They opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye have seen it. Look, here you are at that weed. They're looking at you. They're looking to find something. Go, ha ha. You say, aha, why? Because you discovered something. You found something on them. These people reproach you. So when they say, aha, they found something that they can use to reproach you with. Oh, here's a gang tattoo. Oh, here's a, and she had a knife. I was afraid. The little, a little First Nations woman running at me with a knife. Oh my God. <laughs> right? She has a knife. Terrifying, right? You're caught with body armor uh, and, and thousands of dollars worth of protective equipment. A little First Nations woman with a knife. Oh my God! It's weapon. She has, it's a weapon of mass destruction. Okay. They open open their mouth and say, "Aha, got it." Mm. Look for the reason to kill us. Finish the verse. Kind of one That was the end of the verse. Uh, All right, Psalm. Uh, Psalm 109 and 2. Daraj, go ahead. This is Psalm 109, verse 2. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. The so-called Canadian is a deceiver. He's, he's the devil the Bible speaks of. Okay? Lied about history. And again, you, you wouldn't have heard about this in, you know, your uh, um, a peon public school. Oh, no, no. Okay, they don't bring this history out in Toronto. They don't teach so-called West Indian children this in Toronto. They didn't want a Negro anywhere in Canada, anywhere in Western Canada. Okay, they speak against us reproachfully. They didn't want us in Canada. So what makes you think you're going to become equal with them? Okay, a few generations later, when their grandson is running the country, who is also in blackface. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and their grandson is ruling now. This cat I'm reading about you want black people in Canada. His his grandson is in blackface and he's the president. He he's told you on the news, look, I don't know how many times I was in blackface. They were doing it every week. Okay. All those negro all those um, right. um, um all these rulers, they know each other. So mm -hmm. they all go to similar schools. Okay. They around Trump. Friends with Trump, friends with the who else? The Bushes, the Clintons, and the Trudeaus, they all know each other. Okay? And all these people are the descendants of slave masters, and slave masters damn near the damn self. Okay? To be in blackface. There's a protester downtown in, in Canada, Officer Adiar. 
in blackface. Imagine right. being so imagine being so vile and so disgusting. When a race of people is mourning, you go out and mock them. Like, like imagine a black people 9-11, right? Black people in Toronto came out and uh dressed as the World Trade Center. <laughs> one was one Negro was the plane, the other one was the World Trade Center. And they ain't doing this, not getting pretending to put each other down. Okay. Canada would have been, you know, up in arms. There would have been new legislation passed. All right. Yeah. But when it happens to you, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody gives a damn. That yeah. devil came out uh, in blackface. I pray that devil dropped dead of COVID-19, man. I pray that COVID chokes up his damn lungs and they don't have a ventilator to put him on. And he is he begs and gasps and he claws for breath on that stupid hospital bed. I pray the most high send it to him and, and anyone else that seeks to, to mock our deaths, man. That seeks to come out and make so a like, show so like our a, deaths. Go ahead. That dead was looking like Nightcrawler. <laughs> and, and, he was, and he was in a terrible black The Canadians are not, you know, they, they're trying to be like Americans. Man, they suck at it, man. Come on, man. Come on, maple syrup. And he looked like the damn night. He looked like it looked like a like a green, like he was the Hulk, the Black Hulk. Okay, look horrible. Go ahead. Yes, sir. That's in Philip Square where we were handing out flyers a few hours ago. Yeah, that's right where it was. He he come out in blackface. Oh, look at me, right? <laughs> they need to drop dead, man. The Lord, the Most High, wants it to happen. That's why he sent the COVID. No, no problem, no problem. Just when you thought in America. Donald Trump was saying he was going to, they were saying they were going to open up. Most of the country was going to go into phase two on the fourth. The Lord said, oh, okay. And and now it, uh, you can open if you want. There's no stores open. <laughs> the National Guard closed off the uh, marketplace in the town I'm in over here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You can't go to a store nowhere. They thought they were going to open up the Lord, shut it down. Okay. You're not opening a damn thing. All right. And they'll just continue to, to thwart their plans and crush them, and they'll continue to die of the COVID. All right? right? right. The idiot in damn blackface. They open their mouth against us. They hate us, man. They hate us. We're not the damn hate group. Okay? We're not full. You know, we're not uh, um, uh, racist in the sense of, of what they think of as racist. We haven't killed anyone. We don't teach to go out and just shoot people because of, you know, their race or the color of their skin. The police do do that to us. They do beat our beat us and knock our eyeballs out. We don't do that. They open their mouth against us. Did you finish Psalm 109 and 2? Uh, so I can say uh, one more part left. Um, finish. Concert. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Those devils lie and say Negroes are bad citizens. And they lie and say that, that you know the urban youth are the cause of most of the crime in Canada. When you commit crimes in your banking system, you shouldn't be charged an interest. That's a crime they commit every day. They act like, well, Mr. Jones, you can have the mortgage at 2.07% financing. That's a sin in the damn Bible. You taking money off the top, filling your coffers with money that doesn't belong to you. You can't add interest to an Israelite. Right. Okay. That's not how you're supposed to run a banking system. All right. On the Israelites. Now to the other nations, yeah, we're going to interest rates are going to be 20 percent 30 percent you never get that of slavery okay they're going to call me mr bad credit all right <laughs> mr 300 not for Sparta. with every devil in our zone is going to have 300 credit score i'm sorry you can't get this long you got a 300 credit score would you like some chicken feathers i got chicken feathers in the back <laughs> that your family but no, you can't have food your credit score and they're, they're going to have to they're going to buy food based on their credit score <laughs> they love to make everything so diff damn difficult in, in, right. in our lives. You've got to have a, a, five, a 700 credit score to, to live in a house apartment in Canada. No sweat. You're going to need a 750 credit score to buy chicken feathers. <laughs> All right? Wow. 750 to buy chicken feet. If you don't have the credit, you're getting chicken feathers. Okay? This What I'm saying is biblical. The scriptures say meditate errors upon them. Okay? Everything we do to them is going to be lawful. Right. Okay? Not being nuts and maniacs, okay, like the damn uh, Russian army, but they're going to be judged for what they've done, and it has to happen, man. That's like that's yeah. equality. We got punished for what we did, right? Our right. sons, our brothers are in Guantanamo South. They pay for what they do. 
Brothers that kill, the cats that kill Houdini, they're going to be caught. They're going to jail for murder. All right? We pay for what we do. You're going to pay for what you do, Canada. That's equality. Okay? Uh, did you finish the verse? Psalm 109 and 2? Cut out one, cut out. All right. Hosea 8 and 8, Officer IDR. Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Israel, we're swallowed up. When you're integrated with someone, but you're at the bottom, you're swallowed up. Toronto is a multicultural society. Where is Where are the Negroes? Where are the First Nations? Where are the Latinos? We're at the bottom of Canadian society. Okay? We don't dominate politically. We don't dominate economically. Right? We don't dominate uh, um, the real estate business. We're at the bottom of it. We're swallowed up. We're integrated with them. But when it comes to us, we're swallowed up. Read on. Now shall there be among the Gentiles as a vessel where is no pleasure. We were among the Gentiles, the Canadians, the Pakistanis, the East Indians, Africans, Asians. We're amongst them as a vessel wherein there is no honor. They mock us and make fun of us, you know, call us thugs. And, oh, look at him. You got to watch out around black people. They're still your stuff. <laughs> you know, black people, well, to the point the prime minister is in blackface. Okay. You're a vessel. We're a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. These, these nations don't, don't have love for us. Okay, so our daughters are, you know, coming out of twenty-four floor windows, man. Son's getting beaten till the eyeball falls out. Go ahead, young man. It looks in the back. Kind of long cost, sir. I just want to have a question regarding the uh, Gentiles here on this verse. Uh huh. So they're not our people. That the Gentiles that they speak on on the New Testament, correct? No, we're Gentile. Okay, the word Gentile just means nations. All right. Gentile means nation. Gentiles means nation. OK. Generally, a Gentile is a non-Israelite. But in many cases, especially in the New Testament, the word Gentile could be non-Israelite or in more, it is an Israelite who is living like someone that's not an Israelite. OK. Why did I say in the New Testament? Because it's after the Syrian captivity, Babylonian captivity, then the Maccabees of the Greek captivity. You can read about in the Maccabees where it said they sold the children of Israel as slaves, the so-called Greeks, and the Arabs are around about them. We were already scattered in uh, Babylon or Iraq, scattered into uh, Crete, scattered into Italy, scattered into Spain, etc. By the time Paul was on the scene, and so he used the term Gentile the same way we use the term uh, uh, Trinidadian, West Indian, you right. know, so-called Black Canadians as well. All right. All right. So you can understand this, this this Gentile, these are the other nations. All right. Uh, and among them, among the other nations in Canada, we're uh, most likely to get arrested. The last hired, the first fire. We dominate low income housing. Okay, Negroes in the First Nations. Let me read on this article. Canadian authorities instituted rigorous medical examinations to screen and delay black entrance into the nation. So they tried to find medical reasons to not let you into the country. Medical officers often receive bribes and fees based on the number of rejections, meaning what? If you reject this many people, well, we'll give you a bribe. We'll give you a fee. We'll pay you to tell black people, no, you're not medically qualified. There's something wrong with you. And they do it to this day. All oh, these people are just predators. They're just sick. You know how Negroes are. That's in the Bible as well. Give me Psalm uh, 41 and 8. Psalm 41 and 8. All right. Khan Arwan Khan. Psalms 41 and 8. An evil disease, save me, save they, cleave it fast unto him. See, they say an evil disease cleave unto him. Cleave unto who? David. They say an evil disease cleaves unto us. Well, they're, black people are just the way they are because they're just, you know, they're just, um, um, there's something wrong with them genetically. They used to say that back in the early um, 1900s as well. They're genetically inferior. They're this, they're that. How about we're impoverished? And every other race got an opportunity to climb out of poverty in Canada, except for so-called black people, so-called West Indians, and so-called First Nations. They say there's an evil disease. 
And in Canada, they would bar you from coming into the country for medical reasons. And they would lie about it because they're deceivers. As we read, I believe, in um, Psalm 109. All right. I'm going to read some more history, some more so-called black history. This is from Historica Canada, and it reads 1812 to 1815, the colored troops and the War of 1812. Thousands of black volunteers fought for the British during the War of 1812, fearing American conquest and the return to slavery. Many blacks in Upper Canada served heroically in colored and regular regiments. What was our treat to that? That the, the mother of that woman, Regis Korczynski Paquette, she is a descendant of these so-called Negroes, the black loyalists of Nova Scotia. She's a descendant of them. Her descent, her ancestors fought and died for this damn country, man. And what, how did the Toronto police treat her? They treated her by, by allowing her daughter to, to fly out of a 24-story window, man. Or more than likely, just tossed her the hell out of herself. Give me Psalm 109.4, my last scripture. I'll uh, uh, paraphrase the scripture and then I'm going to close it out. Let me Psalm 109 and 4, man. Like all throughout, I read this history today, uh, and it made me sick. The amount of times that black people have fought for Canada, fought for Canada, fought in their wars. And we are 20 times more likely in Ontario to be murdered by the police. A woman just fell 24 right. floors, okay, down to her death. But if they were in Chinatown, they wouldn't have rolled like that. They wouldn't have operated like that. How do you know? Because of how they operate in Chinatown. Read the scripture, Matthew. Khan Khan, Psalms 109 and 4. For my, for my love, they are my adversaries. For my love, they are my adversaries. But we have loved this place, man. The descendants of many so-called black people in Nova Scotia are the black loyalists who fought for Canada against the United States. We've loved this country. And for their love, what do they treat us with? 20 times more likely to be in jail. Illegal uh, 3D printed guns with no tags. Uh, give me some other ones. Low income housing. All right. They destroyed us. They hate us for our love, for our love, for our service to Canada. Some devil goes out to Toronto in blackface and, and mocks the crowd. For my love, they are my adversaries. We have loved this place, man. And they are our adversaries. They've been against us. For what? For fighting in their army? Now, mind you, this is 1812. This is before the 1900s. When they said, what about black people? They're bad citizens. When 100 years ago, we fought for them against America in the World War of 1812. That was damn near a world war. That war of 1812, that's in the book of Daniel. Okay, that's how big of a war it is. All right? When it says three kings shall be destroyed, that's the war of 1812 in the book of Daniel. That's how big of a war it is again, I'm saying. And we fought and took part in that war. And what do they treat us with? Blackface. Okay? What do they treat us with? Blackface, man. All right? Most of us love you. Well, Canada, Canada, okay, runs and be, is rich off of a slave economy. They ain't slave West Indian nations. Okay? Again, are there good Nazis, Mr. and Mrs. PhD? Are there good Nazis? Hell no. Well, there are no good Canadians either. They're going into slavery. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 says, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword, and he that leadeth into captivity must be led into captivity. Right. Canada had slaves. And so the Canadians must right. have slaves when Jesus Christ, a black man, returned. Whether right. they're good, bad, educated, or non-educated, they're going to pick cotton and make lemonade for the First Nations and so-called Negroes uh, in Toronto, in the ghetto, and in hell. That's according to the Bible. All right? For our love, they hated us, man. They, our history all throughout the nation of Canada is so great that they should treat us with some damn respect, that there should be no reason any so-called black woman or black man, Latino, etc., is struggling for a, a place to stay. There should be no homeless First Nations in Canada, man. none, for what we've done for this place, for what we have suffered, all right? But there are, there are, and the Most High sees it, man, and he's gonna destroy this place. Make sure you sign in, all right? If you don't have your Hebrew name, go ahead and sign in, all right? Uh, um, brothers, they wanna join the school, 
uh, wear, make sure you wear all black, etc. Officer Adi, are you going to read the security announcements? We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. I was saying no about joining the school. Okay, becoming a trooper in the school, becoming an officer in the school is not it's not mandatory. All right, this is something this is something that you have to do. This is a decision um, that you have to make. All right, and the scripture says, "When thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation." You're going to be hated for joining the ISUPK. You're going to be called, you know, you're in a cult. Okay, woman's not going to like it. You're not going to like it sometimes. Okay, you have to operate based on logic, based on orders, and not emotions. Okay, we get emotions all the time. Wow. Okay, but uh, uh, in this school, we operate based on order, no excuses. Right. Okay, right. and it's very, very hard to stay in here, to last in here. Okay, so keep that in mind and, and examine yourself and make sure this is something that you really want to do. All right. Uh, Officer IDR, if you have the um, security announcements, if you could read them with the um, uh, read them with the um, prayers. All right, the PhD, whatever the hell you are, um, we still love you. The scriptures say this: that uh, he speaketh sweetly with his lips, but inwardly he seeketh to overthrow you. Uh, be, beware of these uh, accounts with silly names. It's probably, it's probably the RCMP. Or um, uh, Canadian intelligence trying to get us to act like maniacs. Okay, I'm not saying this person, but you'll see that. I'm not saying this person necessarily, but you'll see that in the future. The FBI is pissed off that we weren't out throwing bricks. I imagine the RCMP is or was as well. All right, they're gonna know and find out that we don't operate based on emotions. Again, we don't go out and throw bricks when one Negro dies. We're right. mad at slavery. <laughs> you get my point. We're mad at something that happened in Canada in the uh, 16, 1700s. We're angry at the First Nations that were enslaved in Quebec. All right. And um, also, I'm going to grab the security, security announcements. Hold on one second. It, it is almost like it's not. Well, the revelation is in Matthew. There's also one in Second Ezra. I thought it was. Uh, so what does it exactly say? All right. With that being said, I clap it up. Yeah, All right. Uh, with that being said, with the I should be case security announcements. Akim can um yeshabim, which means be seated. I say majim. Take a seat, Akim. All right. Uh, security announcements. With the I should be case start out of one west. 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Rule for new brother and sister. When a new brother or sister comes into the school, they are off limits for six months. They are to be saluted only. They are here to shed themselves of the world. Okay, leave the sisters the hell alone. All right, no DMs, inboxes, or none of that. All right. If you have an interest in a sister, uh, um, just ask me. All right, just ask me. We're not the Catholic Church. Okay, you can get married in here. <laughs> very likely, it's very possible you can get married. You don't have to. Be a nun, uh, um, a damn, whatever, be into whatever in, they're they're into, okay. Um, yeah, they're here to shed themselves in the world. If they need transportation, the teacher will arrange it. After six months, if a brother or sister has an interest in a particular person, if I can speak on the transportation, uh, be careful in driving. Don't uh, um, don't get into a damn car accident driving on the wrong side of the road or in um or in adverse weather. All right. You're coming from classes and it's late and uh, you need to stay somewhere or what have you. Just, again, let us know. Let us know your situation, etc. All right. After six months, if a brother or sister has an interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or sister. Um, there is another six months in which the brother and sister will court each other. After a six-month period, the brother and sister will get permission from the head to marry tithes, which is a commandment. You can find that in the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 21, Malachi, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. It means 10th in the Hebrew, Maishra, 10% of every penny of any increase the Lord gives you. Get to the teacher, so it'll be uh, through PayPal, is how we're doing it right now. Like I said before, I have uh, um, put in a request to find some uh, way electronically we can uh, send the money without a fee. That's in the. Um, uh, what I'm um, that's in the um, that's in the queue right now. Okay, being processed, and I'm working on uh, what platform we can use. 
All right. Uh, free will offering for priests, not mandatory. It's whatever amount you would like. Upcoming holy convocations, as you all know, we have the Passover uh, postponed until further notice. Stay close to me about that. Uh, the memorial, the blowing of trumpets, Thursday, September 17th, 2020. You can read about that in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 24 through 25. Uh, check iishbk.com, social media for any updates. Okay. Uh, with that being said, I majum, which means to stand. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer and wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Um, Officer Adiar, do you have the prayers? Okay, you're going to read the Lord's Prayer in the Hebrew. Akim, you need to um, get these prayers, say these prayers, uh, begin to uh, learn how to read Hebrew. All right. Uh, I Holy Days, where, and you guys watched the I Holy Day yesterday, brothers get called up. I do not want to call you up in Canada, and we sound like we're illiterate. All right. So make sure you read Hebrew. It makes us look more peer, you know, powerful and, and you know, official. We can read different damn languages, okay? So uh, read prayer in Hebrew, and I'll read it in English, all right? Karanoa Khan. Abanawa. Abanawa. Karanoa Khan. Abanawa. 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 Shabbat Shammayim. Shabbat Shammayim. Kadash. Kadash. Ayah. Ayah. Shamka, Shamka, Yahawa, Yahawa, Malawaka, Malawaka, Tabaha, Tabaha, Ratazaka, Ratazaka, Aya, Aya, Asha. 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 Barataza. Barataza. Kawa. Kawa. Aya. Aya. Ashamayam. Ashamayam. Natan. Natan. Lanawa. Lanawa. Nakam. Kal, Kal, Yawam, Yawam, Wasalak Lanawa, Wasalak Kawabat Wanawa, Kawabat Wanawa, Kasalak Nawa, Kasalak Nawa. Kawabab Yanawa. Kawabab Yanawa. Wala. Wala. Tabayahan Nawa. Tabayahan Nawa. Basanayawan. Basanayawan. Abab. Abab. Awasa Shayanawa. Awasayanawa. Mayan. Mayan. Rai. Rai. Kaya. Kaya. Maka. Maka. Amalakwa. Amalakwa. Wahala. 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 Wahatapa Arata. Wahatapa La Laya Wallayam. Laya Wallayam. Aman. Aman. All right, in the English, our Father. Our Father. Father. You are in heaven. You are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. 
Thy will, will be done. done. Thy will be done. As it is in heaven. As, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And, and lead us not. Lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Into temptation. From evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the power. And the, power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. And the glory. Forever. 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 So be it. So be it. So be it. Uh, Akim Star turn. Man of Israel, we're going to give one courtesy salute. I'm Ajim Shabbat. I'm Ajim. Barak. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shabbat Barak Hashem. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shabbat Shabbat. All right. Uh, Slaki Akim in class. We'll all say it at once. All right. I'm not a general, so you wouldn't address it just me. That's uh, a thumb, which means to all the brothers. All right. So those of you that don't know, I just said was the Lord in the name of Christ or Jesus in the bastard tongue. Uh, bless you. All right, you brothers, plural. All right. This is for the sisters that are online in the room, etc. Men of Israel, we're going to give the sisters one courtesy salute. I imagine Shabbat. I imagine Barak. Now, the sisters, after I say, we say it, the sisters would repeat after yeah, us. They would say, Yahweh Shemar, I'll a thumb by Hashem Yahweh That means the Lord watch over you, okay, in the name of Christ. Yahweh watch over you in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yajimata, which means hands down, as to speak. What officer IDR again? Shalom, so Yabashim Yashabarta. Shalom, Yabashim Yashabarta.